You're listening to a very special episode Super of, special. Film, of Film Seizure. I am Jeff Arbuckle. I'm Jason Oliver. So, uh, kind of a special event happened uh, about a week ago, a little over a week ago now that this is uh, when this gets published. Yes. Um, why don't you explain to us what yeah, so, we took um, part in? So, it was pretty, pretty cool. Um, there had been some rumblings of this happening uh that or, or the possibility of this happening and then all of a sudden it was announced officially um really not that long before it aired a couple of weeks before, yeah, yeah that um that uh, uh joe bob briggs of um drive-in theater and uh, monster vision was going to come back for one full night um, 24 hour, 24 movie, hour marathon. movie marathon 13, 13 movies, movies over what they call it from from dusk till dawn till, till dusk, dusk again yes um and then maybe into dawn <laughs> yeah and maybe a little bit into dawn <laughs> um and and it was going to be on shutter the streaming service um which specializes in horror films um pretty cool subscription service um and it was going to be the, the idea was that it would air for 24 hours then that was it that was and you would be gone forever if you didn't see it you didn't see it it would be gone forever, and you snooze, and, you lose. And uh, Joe Bob would retire from horror hosting, right. as he specifically said. That was Which his... I, I have a, an interesting little side bit we'll talk about uh, when we get to that, but just go ahead. Um, so so this happened. It, ha- it was Friday the 13th, appropriately, that it launched, uh, and then nobody could see it. <laughs> right. There was a little, and, and there was, I think, an underestimation of yes. exactly how many people were going to actually I don't know, be there at the very beginning. I don't know if they've given any numbers yet at this point. But. I don't think so. I know that uh, Shudder's very excited that people responded the way that they did. I know that Joe Bob is very not excited about breaking the internet as it was. I right. read that article. Oh, was, oh really? Yeah, he That's is funny. not happy about He says you should never be happy to break something. Right. Yeah, well, I agree yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I will say that um so Shutter did the right thing though in the long run. Yeah, they put everything up on on their service to stream. And then they ran it again this past weekend. Oh, they did? Yeah, they did. Um, um are they taking that down? And the streaming content because I haven't gotten through it all yet. Um, uh, I I suspect that they'll keep it for a little while at the yeah. very because le- all of the movies that were playing were movies that were either well, are, they were already streaming on they, Shutter. Right? They were already on Shutter. Right. So at that point in time, technically, I don't think Shutter can get in trouble for having their own show that they own. Yeah, which would be the Joe Bob content, right? And have it basically play it like. They license those movies, and as long as they have those movies, right. they can do what they want with right. those movies. So, um, so yeah, so it aired uh, 13 movies over 24 hours, uh, a little over 24 hours, and uh, um, Jeff, like a maniac, um, watched the whole damn thing from start to finish, uh, didn't sleep for 26 hours straight or something 31 hours it was 31 hours was yeah because when i woke up i woke up about five o'clock on friday i had a dental appointment in the morning I, this is the mundane life of jeff arbuckle <laughs> I had a dental appointment at the dental school in the morning so i came home about uh i think i got home about 12 30 had a shit ton of taco bell in my hand <laughs> gobbled that down like a maniac Took an Ambien, went to sleep. Oh, wow. Woke up about 4.45, 5 o'clock, could not go back to sleep, which was fine because the vet ended up calling me about uh, one of my cats and some, <laughs> some test results there. Uh, so, mundane life, mundane of, Jeff life of Jeff Arbuckle. <laughs> uh, but then I went, uh, ran a couple of quick errands, came home, ordered some Big Kahuna p- pizza, yep. and settled in to watch... Nothing for two and a half hours. Yeah, so I, um, uh, I, my stream didn't kick in until uh, about halfway through Rabid. Oh, wow. I got... Uh, uh, I just well, I take, f- I take that back. It might have come back, but I was... Susan was kind of getting impatient. She's like, well, let's watch something. So we ended up watching the Vinegar Syndrome release of Bloodhook, which is fucking tremendous. Uh, if you haven't seen it, watch it. Um, Check it out. 
check it out. Yeah. And it was kind of perfect because it, it fits the same vibe of what Joe Bob would show. I've got so, the 13 um, movies. So right I now. didn't get in until Rabid, and then I had to go to bed, and then I, I watched what I could the rest of the weekend. So the first movie was Taurus Trap, which we were specifically excited oh, about. Oh, we were so excited. We I mean, love Taurus Trap, and so does Joe Bob. I Bates. think we knew he was going to play it. Yeah. Um, and then well, because the, I knew it was on Shutter. And then <laughs> and then the fact that we, th- we heard that he was going to start with it, we got really excited. Then we couldn't watch it. It was really sad. Yeah, that was a little frustrating. <laughs> and, and, you know, when you – when you throw your sleep business out of whack, yeah, um, you get real frustrated real fast yeah. when you don't know what's going to happen. But uh, Taurus Trap was the first movie. Sleepaway Camp was the second movie. Yep. I love Sleepaway yep. Camp. I came in. The, the feed popped on right when a kid's face hit another kid's bare ass. And that's when I knew I've made all the right choices in life. Real quick, back to... <laughs> <laughs> Real quick back to Taurus Trap though. That's funny. Um uh the very first time I saw Taurus Trap was um hosted by Joe Bob Briggs. Oh nice. Yeah, it was on Monster. No, that was one that my brothers liked and it I was grew up the, with. it was the very first time I saw it was was um with Joe Bob Briggs on Monster Vision and it scared the shit out of me. Oh, it's a freaking like, movie. It it was so scary. It's one of the, it's still I think to this day one of those movies that is able to get under my skin. Um so su- I was super excited yeah. to to get to f- go back and watch it with the Joe Bob um hosting. It was it was it was cool. Cool for me. For sure. Um just to run through these movies here uh real quick. So Taurus Trap for Sleepaway Camp second which uh, Felissa Rose who played Angela from Sleepaway Camp was in studio with Joe Bob, and that was there's some good stories there. Rabid, which is David Cronenberg and Marilyn Chambers, I fucking love that movie yep, too. It's a great movie. Uh, the Prowler, I was so excited to see for the very first time, and except for the main girl, I fucking hated that movie. I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, Sorority Babes and Slime Ball Bolorama, great classic. And that's that classic one is a B-movie. classic of um, all of those late night programs. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember how many times I saw that on like USA Up All Night. It seemed like I don't was, know how they showed that on USA up they, on that. It was Cinemax it was it was, it was blurred or cut heavily. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they cut like an eighty minute movie to an hour basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then you had uh, Daughters of Darkness, which is the artsy fartsy uh, entry in this movie. It, that's a great movie. I had just seen that the week before. Blood Feast, uh, which was a Herschel Gordon Lewis um, Basket Case, which is a classic of eighties B movie. Yeah, cinema uh, Reanimator the. I mean, spiritually the same. That's as, absolutely yeah. classic, yeah. Uh, Demons, which I love. Uh, Legend of Boggy Creek was the one where this is the 11th movie, and I'm starting to get drowsy, and that's not a good one to oh be my God. Uh, there. Uh, Hellraiser was when I picked up my second, or really probably more like my 22nd. <laughs> wind. Uh, wind. And then finished with Pieces, which is... That's that's an amazing movie. And so yeah, I fun. haven't I haven't watched the last movie yet because my stream went down again on the last movie. I was able to keep it going through the desktop. I couldn't get um, it, but and then I could get it on my phone because I I showered during Hellraiser and I was still listening to it on yeah. my phone in the bathroom. <laughs> I um mundane life of Jeff Arbuckle. I still have. I've probably watched about half of it now, um, but I'm still trying to like catch, get caught up. But I'm sort of saving pieces for last. Oh, because that's, I know right I know that it's the sign off and everything, and and yeah, and, and, it, and he waxes a little nostalgic, and which is I've got something set aside for the end of this uh, there too about that because that that kind of resonated with me with some of the other people talking. But um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about for you. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about we've, we've mentioned this before, but just to kind of refresh, um, talk about watching movies late night on the weekends when you were a kid. Yeah. So for me as a kid, a lot of my media intake was very, very, very strictly regulated by my parents. Um, I didn't get to see a lot of PG-13, R-rated things. You know, I, I was what I watched was well, what they they th- knew I watched was very <laughs> was very regulated. Um, but there were always moments, right? Like maybe mom was out for the night, and I'd be home alone with dad, and we'd watch Halloween four, you know, because it was on TV. You know, there were always these moments where I would catch these bits of things. But um, by the time we had a VCR. 
in like I don't know the mid '80s or so. I think was when we got a VCR. Um, that kind of changed everything for me because I knew how I made. I took it upon myself to figure out how to do everything with this VCR, how to program it, how to <laughs> you know um, what types of tape speeds did different things. You know, like oh, you had to know that. Stuff. You had to figure all that stuff out, and yeah. um, my parents were going to teach me. So, um, so I you know I learned that I could, if I put it on extended play, I could get six hours of recording, right? And a crap like that. It looked a little shittier, but it didn't matter, right? I got it. So um, so what I would do with stuff like Saturday, Saturday Nightmares and um, Up All Night were a little more unique, if I remember. They, they didn't necessarily tell you. No, they did. They did tell you they what they were going to program. Yeah. So I would look and I would say, well, that sounds interesting. And I would set recordings. I, I would... I would. I want to see Children of the Corn. I've never seen that. I want. I want to watch that. So I'd record it off of Saturday Night Nightmares. Slugs was another one I remember. Oh uh, yeah, know. Slugs. Yeah. Um, but then uh, with with Monster Vision, uh, I was a little bit older when I think that started. Because that that's starting like Th- the, that started in the nineties. In the nineties, yeah. Um, because and I could watch some it wasn't of it. Joe Bob. It was. It was either a. a, a self-programmed thing right. or it they would have pin and teller every now and then and they were i think when monster vision first started it was a little classier because i remember they would do a lot of like the universal monster stuff uh they did a lot more black and white like they would have a godzilla night they would have a universal monsters night. yeah they would do uh they would do uh every now and then they would do a stinkers yeah one, you know where it was like the the dead uh, the um Giant Claw and mm-hmm. Deadly Manas and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, but then when 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 I I never I never got to see um, a drive-in theater that he did. I never I, I didn't have um, premium we, cable. We had uh, the movie channel off and on throughout my life when yeah. I was little. It was just kind of depending on however mom was doing raising four kids. Yeah. You know, uh, but Monster Vision. I, I I would watch religiously Siskel and Ebert. Oh um, yeah. On so I think it was Saturday mornings or whatever. Yeah, usually. Yeah. But but but. Joe Bob Briggs was the first person I heard talk about movies that were um, maybe you know a little less appreciated, to, if I'm being kind, but in an intelligent but funny way. It's his audience, I think, was so vast, probably more mm-hmm. vast than he even realizes. Well, um, I think more than Shutter realized, <laughs> and 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 it it really kind of changed my appreciation of of movies forever um it's probably subconsciously why i sought out a video store to work at why i wanted to work at a movie theater um why when i was at those two places i consumed as much as i could especially at the video store i mean Mm -hmm. you know i'd I'd rent three movies every night you know that's what i'd do and i'd go home um and I go back I, to work. The things that I would not have seen if I didn't work at a video store, like Clerks or Embrace of the Vampire, right? <laughs> but and then, but then there <laughs> were things. Were but then there were things I remembered Midnight. seeing on on Monster Visions and and getting to rent and actually see uncut, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which was also right. a revelation, right? So it was. It, I don't even think I realized how much that meant to me until I watched what I watched over the weekend with, with the 20, mm-hmm. with the last drive in it. I, I, I really don't think I realized how important he probably was Yeah, to, um, to my appreciation of movies. There are so many people that we are very, very fond of. Uh, and one person that I have in my little statement that I prepared that, that is very specific. Jeff has a, a prepared statement. I have a prepared statement. <laughs> it's typed. It's typed. It and is. Printed. It's typed and it's typed. <laughs> for two pages. Um, anyway, uh, but we, we kind of got the understanding about 10 years ago through another person that we would watch on YouTube, you know, and how much that he meant to him. Right. And that he wasn't the only one because he was reminding everybody how important these types of things were. Um, for me, I would say that just what the biggest thing that, that I find fondness in that Joe Bob's 100% a part of is the movie host. Yeah. Um, when I was growing up, I had Sammy Terry on Channel 4. Um, and I was telling you, it's like every now and then we would get a Saturday night um, um Elvira yeah. uh, on Channel 59 
or we would have um you know bob and tom every now and then would do a saturday night special uh movie then there was saturday nightmares and up all night and then monster vision mystery science theater yep, absolutely. and now it's to the point where i seek out streaming apps that still will have the the modern day internet movie hosts that are just doing it for the love of mm -hmm. doing it and while some of them aren't or are better than others i still very much in lo love that 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 uh, that thrill and that that uh, appreciation that they have for movies. There was a, a sense for me, and like I said, I would have to I would have to set a recording um, a lot of times and go to bed and then run downstairs in the morning before everyone woke up and get my my tape so that it wouldn't get confiscated. And I would I would record over the same tape over and over and over again because I would consume it in bits and pieces throughout the week when I had a chance when nobody was home or whatever. Right. Um, but uh, there was just this feeling that when a movie was on one of those shows, that it was a little bit dangerous, <laughs> right? Well, it, yeah. I mean, like there, it, there was a certain sense of I think rebellion. I, I think I may probably had more of that just because of my experience and with my upbringing. But, um, and, I, and this was truly forbidden to me. But um, but still, it was like I, this. I feel like there was a rebellious side yeah. to that, particularly Joe Bob's show, because he would call out censorship. Yeah, you know of of things, and and like, why are you giving me these movies if you're just going to cut them up or whatever? Yeah, it's all you know, it's yeah. blood, guts, and nudity, and yeah. it's it's not the stuff. The, the three Bs. It's not the stuff you you are able to see on prime time. That it's not sanitized. It's it's the it's the underbelly. Yeah, and, it's ex it's exploitation, and the underground has always been more interesting to me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you're you're digging deeper than I have, and I've dug deep. Yeah, you know, and you you dig way deeper than I do, and I salute you because I don't know if I'd want to see some of the things that you <laughs> dig to, but that's okay. Um, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's kind of it, it for me. Um, it I'm was, really excited a, to see that that he has determined that the people have suffered for long enough He's and, back. That, and that it's coming back in some way, shape or form later this year. It I, sounds like, yeah. And one of the things that I was going to kind of say when, when we talked about like horror host, he would say, this was my last, you know, basically the end of my horror host. I never thought of him as a horror. Host. I never did either. He's a movie host yeah. and he was an exploitation host primarily. Yeah. I mean, most of the movies that I read off are exploitation movies in yeah. one way or another. They are horror movies too, but he well, he's but, a he's a film reviewer. I mean, right. he's an and industry he guy. He, he exploitation. Right. I mean, he uh, so. he he's not coming at this stuff like a Sammy Terry, where they're kind of putting on a spook show. Right. Right. He's coming at it with knowledge, it, with knowledge, <laughs> legitimate insider dropping, stories, knowledge. Stories, yeah. Like he he knows the people who are in and who are making these movies. It's it's beyond the horror host by, yeah. by a mile. And, and a half. so I wondered, it's like, well, would he come back in some way? Like just as a, as a uh, show, just talking about movies, like showcasing a movie, not showing it, but just talking about it. Uh, like almost a documentary type of series. Yeah. Or if he did come back, he's not necessarily saying he's quitting being a horror host. He's just hosting movies, you know? Yeah. It's like, so um, be, you it, called it. You, you said that he it seemed just to be felt like he was working. He was goading us yeah. to feel one way, but that he was that he had a he had a he had a backdoor plan. Yeah, he was. It was. Um, he was protesting too much. Yeah, that it was his final ride. It just didn't feel like it was the case. Yeah, and he seemed to be having a hell of a lot of fun. He did. Um, he seemed. Uh, he was invigorated, uh -huh. you know, and uh, I wouldn't even say reinvigorated, um, but I think because I think he's always had this kind of appreciation of this law. I mean, like we have yet to see him at a at a convention, right? I, yep. Which is surprising because we have two massive horror conventions here, yeah, in the same season uh, if summer uh, here in Indianapolis. But someday we will probably see him here sometime. Yeah, I would and, think so. And I, uh, I uh, maybe I in, would kill maybe in Scranton. Maybe, maybe in Scranton. Scranton. Maybe yeah. in Scranton. Uh, but I would kill to be in that in that panel to yeah. hear him talk. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Oh, it would, be, it would be packed room. It would be. Um, so, should I get to my yes? Let's statement? lay it on us, Jeffrey. 
So, um, and I kind of mentioned this in my first uh, paragraph here. Now, uh, of course, I'm I'm reading this, uh, but it's this is something that I kind of wanted to write in some way, shape, or form and have it out there. Um, we decided that every now and then we're going to do these little special episodes. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe this is the best way since this is going to be the topic. So I'm going to read this now. Okay. Here we go. I, I've practiced this a few times, so hopefully it doesn't just come off stilted. Okay. But we'll see. So <laughs> here we go. I asked Jason if I could share my feelings that started the course through me upon the close of the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs. You see, I've been noodling for an entire week on exactly what I wanted to say, particularly around the offset sentiment, the drive-in never dies, and how it seemed to truly resonate with the fans and seemed to truly mean something to them. When Jason first thought to do our first special episode on this whole topic of the movie marathon, I thought, well, then I would write this on my blog, Be Movie Enema. However, what I wanted to say was much more serious than the character I write as over there, and I worried that sharing truly heartfelt and honest feelings there may detract from the jokes and silliness I usually use that outlet for. Uh, the final moments of Joe Bob's broadcast was dedicated to those who uh, supported him through the years and shared with him their own personal thoughts and feelings about what he meant to them in their lives. While Joe Bob is only part of of a myriad of people who make up the voice of Jeff, the B-movie enema writer, as well as Jeff, the co-host of Film Seizure, I'd be remiss not to share my own appreciation for all the entertainers like Joe Bob Briggs. I, like so many others in this world, have battled depression and anxiety for most of my life. I've learned to successfully battle the condition by writing. Uh, through my writing, I can be who I want and say the things I may not always be able to say when I need to, or fear some sort of retribution or inability to say exactly what I mean when I mean it. For 10 years, I've written publicly, first through a small blog of my own where I um, wrote reviews and various things about comic books, which then led to my most wide audience with a site that I've talked about here before, a comic book blog, uh, where I reviewed comics. And at the time, I was heavily influenced by James Rolfe, a Joe Bob disciple best known as the angry video game nerd. His love for his own nostalgia, for uh, various movies he grew up with, watching Monster Vision every weekend, and the games he played helped inform the place I was when I launched a series of articles at ACB called Geek Life. It allowed me to properly reconcile the feelings I of the things that I loved as a child and later as a young adult and what their own special place in my heart and memory was. Sadly, all of those articles are lost to time. Now, I ultimately left ACB to pursue a project with some very dedicated friends called Late Night Creature Feature. My character on that show would be a horror host trapped in a movie theater and forced to watch movies. There was a sidekick character, an antagonist, the, and the wife of the antagonist who had mixed feelings about her husband's machinations to keep me trapped in watching some really bad movies. Sadly, despite the solid work put in by all involved, Late Night Creature Feature would never see the light of day. But I bring it up because not only was my character influenced by Mike Nelson of Mystery Science Theater, another huge inspiration of mine for so long now, but I was also channeling Joe Bob Briggs. We even had something that tipped our hat to his drive-in totals uh, in some of the earlier episodes that we wrote. I may not have ever been able to be the on-screen personality Joe Bob was, but I would have gladly called him an inspiration to the character. Later, I decided it was time to revisit the world of blogging and finally do something with all those cheap movie packs I bought for Late Night Creature Feature. Thus, B-Movie Enema was born. After taking an unexpected hiatus to handle a personal issue shortly after the blog's launch, I returned. And this time, I was still looking to James Rolfe for some inspiring four-letter words and combination of curse words to express my frustration at something in the movie that I was watching. And I was still riffing the movies similar to MST3K, and still I was focusing on the types of movies that Joe Bob would have reviewed over the years. However, I was also channeling the Mr. Plinkett character from Red Letter Media, as well as soon to discover a real affinity with Brad Jones's work as the cinema snob. I began writing with a reverence, particularly about myself. I felt it appropriate to make fun of me, 
poke fun at my own insecurities and have a laugh at the fact that I'm a divorced man with, and battle loneliness. Some would say that maybe doing that is unfair to myself or revealing deeper hurts or something to be alarmed by. But honestly, it's quite the opposite. I believe I've mentioned this before, but this is therapy for me. I've learned over the past handful of years how I can battle my own insufficiencies and do things that I'm absolutely proud of. Sure, some of the things I've made jokes about on my blog has gotten me down from time to time, but I can bounce back and I can heal myself by having a laugh at a life oddly lived. I think it also helped bring me to where I am right now, Film Seizure, a place that a couple of old friends can come together and chat about goofy shit. My grand point is that while listening to some of those letters Joe Bob mentioned in his sign-off, I was reminded of the most important thing in life, finding what makes you happy and cherishing it forever. If it was remembering a troubling time in your life and how watching a stupid horror host program made your troubles disappear for a little while, so be it. If it was remembering a particular joke someone told you or reading a particular book or a comic at a specifically important crossroads in your life, it's all important if only to you. If someone ever asked me what the best way to battle depression or anxiety, I would always say find what it is that you love. Do what makes you feel better, especially if it's something that gives you more than just a simple short-lived happiness. Do things that you're proud of and honor those who inspire and helped you along the way. For me, it was using all these sensibilities brought from the irreverent humor of Rolf Plinkett, Briggs, uh, Joel, Mike in the Box, and Jones to craft my own voice that I'm very proud of. I've said it before on the show, and I'll say it again. No matter what, you'll always have those things that still bring a smile to your face or warms your heart. Nobody can ever take that away from you. And to me, that's what the drive-in never dies means. Well said. There we go. You know, when it comes to people being mad at Shudder. Oh, that's just silly. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. Just silly. It's silly. It's understandable to be frustrated. But you know what? It's still very worthy of the $5 a month to yeah. pay for it. Oh, goodness gracious. I mean. They also give you like a month for free or something like that. Go and go sign up for them. Watch Joe Bob. Yeah, for watch real. Some, watch go watch Joe Bob. weird movies they have on there. They have some weird movies on there. <laughs> <laughs> go watch them. So, All right. I think that pretty much uh, brings us to the end of our very first special. Um, I think Joe Bob would say four stars. Check, check it out. And well, uh, we got an automatic half. Star. Oh, yeah. No, no nudity. No nudity. Well, automatic, automatic half star deduction. Damn it. Yeah. I mean, I guess Three I can whip my dick out right now, but you won't get to see it. You don't want to anyway. Yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it a weird mangled dick? I, like, I, can, like moon the, I can moon the. Yeah, it's like, it's like, is it mangled? That's his own question. Yeah, it's like, is, yeah. is it mangled? <laughs> watch the watch the last drive-in starring Joe Bob Briggs. Yes, Get watch back. it. Check it out. Um, but anyway, uh, so we'll be back to our normally regularly scheduled uh, uh, episode this Wednesday. This is just a little bonus. Yep, a little bonus. Bonus. We're gonna do this every now you. and then, I think. Yeah. Um, especially if we want to talk about something new. Yeah. Uh, so we don't have because we normally plan stuff ahead just so that we know what we can get done. Yeah. But uh, we hope you enjoyed this. We hope that uh, you check out the last drive in or at least come back for his uh, second return. Yes. Which the, we'll, the, the third we'll, coming. Hopefully we'll get some, some more details soon. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully so. But uh, until Wednesday, I'm Jeff Arbuck. I'm Jason Oliver. And you've been listening to Film Seizure. Joe Bob says check it out. <laughs>